Keeping your controllers as thin as possible is considered a good coding practice in .NET and today I'm going to show you one way how to make your controllers extremely simple. Here I have a web API controller that is responsible for the members resource. You can see that I already have a few endpoints in this controller and we could argue that the controller endpoints are already very thin to begin with. All we have in most of the endpoints is creating a query or command object sending that query or command object using mediator and then getting back some sort of response and based on that result we return a new action result back from our API endpoint with the corresponding HTTP status code. You can see that there is no logic present in our controller endpoints apart from the conditional check to see if the result is a success result which helps us to know which response to return from our endpoint. If we take a look at the other endpoints that we have you will see that they follow a similar pattern where we create a command object, send it using mediator, and then return the appropriate response back from the API. One thing I want to highlight here is that every command and query returns a result object, which is going to help us to simplify this controller endpoint even more. And we are going to use the fact that we always get a result object back to create a nice extension method that is going to help us to simplify the conditional logic here which determines which result to return from the endpoint. So let's see how I can rewrite this endpoint using the result class to convert this into more of a fluent API call. I need to start by creating a result object and I'm going to do that by calling result create to create a new result and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in a new update member command into the result create and we're going to get back a result instance with the update member command as the value property. The call to result create is going to replace this part here where I create the actual command. So let me delete this and let's see what the next step would be. You can see that now the call to mediators I sender send method is failing because we don't have our command object. Let's consider what we need to do here. We need a way to pass the update member command to the sender send method. It needs to support asynchronous calls and it has to return a result object. So if I go to the result extensions class, which I have defined in the domain layer, I'm going to add a new extension method here, which is going to be very simple. I'm going to make it public and static. And remember that it has to be asynchronous. So I'm going to start off with that right away and it returns a result object. Now I'm going to call this method bind and it's going to be generic actually because we need to have an input type for the generic argument and let's define our actual extension method. So the first argument is going to be a result of type tin and the second argument is going to be our actual bind function. So the bind function has to accept a tin object and it has to return a task of result. I'm going to just name it function and inside of the body of this method the implementation is very straightforward. If the current result is a failure result I just return a new result failure instance and I'm going to pass it the errors coming from the current result instance. Otherwise I just call the function that I have provided and I pass it the result value. So this is how I implement the bind method and while I'm here I'm also going to implement the generic version of this method because it's going to be useful. So this is going to be slightly different. It's going to have two generic arguments, a t in and a t out, and it's going to return a result of t out. Also our function here, which is the bind function, has to return a result of t out, and here we need to return a result failure of t out. So this is the generic variant of the bind function. If I go back to the members controller, I said that now we need to replace this part. So let's chain a call to bind. And you can see that we have our command instance. Now we're going to send it using mediator by calling sender.send and we can pass it the command and the cancellation token. So this replaces this part here. And because this is asynchronous now, we have to await it. So we're almost done. After this bind call completes, we have our result object back and now all we need is a way to take that result object and kind of wrap this conditional logic. 
So I'm going to do that inside of the presentation layer by creating a new folder which is going to hold my result extensions. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want the result extensions to depend on the iAction result interface, which I return from my endpoints. And I don't want to introduce this type in my domain layer. So I'm going to make this a static class. Let's make the extension method also static and it's going to be asynchronous and it's going to return back a task of I action result. I'm going to call this extension method match because we are going to be matching the result type and executing a different action depending on if the result is a success or a failure result. The first argument of our match function is going to be our actual result instance. And in this case, we are actually going to have to define our extension method on the task of result because that is what our bind function is returning. So this is going to be result task. And now we need to implement our match function calls. So we have two branches. One is the success and one is the failure branch. So let's define our functions. Because the non-generic result object doesn't have a value, this function is just going to return an I action result and we're going to call it on success. The other function, let's say we pass it the actual result instance and it's going to return an I action result and we're going to call it on failure. So what do we have to do here? First, we have to await our result task to get back our result instance. So await result task and as you can see, we get back our result. And now we just return the appropriate function call. So if the result is a success result, we're going to call on success and it's going to return an I action result back. Otherwise, if it is a failure result, then we're going to call on failure and we're going to pass it the result instance. So if I go back to my members controller, now I just call match and we have to define our match functions. So the first function is going to be this one here, which returns a no content when the result is successful. And the second function is going to take the result object and it's going to return the call to handle failure when I pass the result. So the cool thing that I can do here is I can replace this with method groups and simplify this even further. So let's get rid of all of this. Now I just need to return the call to await here and we can even make this into an expression body if we want to. So let's try to just format this a little better. And this is the result of our refactoring. So what the endpoint looks like now is we create a new update member command. We send it using mediator and we match on the returning result and return an appropriate action result back from our endpoint. So this is the case when we're working with the non-generic result. Let's check out how this would look like here where we actually do return a result value from our command and we also return a more specific action result from our endpoint. So I'm going to quickly create one more extension method here. It's going to be another overload of match and it's going to be generic in this case because I need to accept a tn generic argument on the result. So it's going to be a result of tn and this here when I wait it also has to be a result of tn and the only difference is in the on success call we're going to get the tn value and going to pass it to the on success function so here I just pass in the result value so now I'm going to use this variant here inside of this endpoint so let's do the same flow again so we start by calling result create and we pass it in a new command so let's copy this here the next step is calling bind to convert our create member command into a result object by calling mediator. So let's call sender.send. We pass in the command and the cancellation token. So let's slowly get rid of this part here and let's await this. So if you take a look at bind, we get back our result of quit. So let's chain a call to match and we're going to be calling the generic version this time. So let's name our argument as ID and in the success flow, we have to return a created at action result. So let's call that and we're going to use the ID here to pass it inside of the arguments. So we're going to pass it as the response and also as the value to the route. 
and in the failure flow we can just specify the handle failure as a method group and let's get rid of all of this here and we just return this call from our endpoint so now we have the same behavior as we did before let me just try to simplify this a little all right so again we create a command object we send it using mediator and then we match on the returning result and we execute a success action or a failure action depending on the result state another way to achieve this kind of behavior is by using libraries that have these concepts built in two libraries that come to mind are the one-off and the error or libraries and they are great if you don't want to write all of this from scratch if you enjoyed this video then make sure to smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos until next time Stay awesome and get started with functional programming already.